neither of us came here prepared to do a full on uh, drug decriminalization drug debate. So I'd like to just broaden the, the, your critique of libertarianism a little bit as we bring the conversation to a close. Um, I saw an older episode that you did with Chris Rufo, um, who I've also I've clashed with him before a bit. Um, and you all were offering a critique of uh, reason style libertarianism and classical liberalism. I like to play a little bit of that critique and oh uh, god, the, I never the, have to see old clips of videos. I did. I hope that it's not embarrassing. Like just, it's it's not embarrassing. Let's just uh, play it, and I'd like to expand on that critique a little bit. The one criticism that bothered me. This is our second camp of weird criticism. Was from Reason Magazine, the Libertarian magazine, which I like came up through politically, and they wrote a piece titled "Chris Rufo Became the Thing He Hates." And this is a kind of criticism you get from the sort of like reasonable right, the like thoughtful right wing, where we were going after wokeness in a way that was very thoughtful. It was like we're better than them, but they lose. So what is it? What do the, what does that matter? And I'm always for, for in my own personal life, I find myself kind of torn between these two places where I recognize the uh, the authoritarian tactics, and I'm also forced to recognize the fact that they are successful and the alternative is not winning. Look, um, for some reason, libertarians are criticizing me for uh, creating the political narrative and working with policymakers to abolish DEI bureaucracies in public universities. We're, we're eliminating a ideological uh, uh, department of the government. Uh, in theory, libertarians should be cheering this on. Libertarians, likewise, have been advocating uh, very ineffectively, despite putting uh, huge resources into uh, advocating school choice um, uh, uh, for decades now. Uh, and yet, uh, in recent years, if you talk to Doug Ducey, the governor of Arizona, the first governor to pass uh, universal school choice, if you talk to Ron DeSantis, if you talk to Governor Abbott, They'll tell you that my work on critical race theory and gender ideology in schools, exposing it, making parents aware of it, mobilizing parents at school board meetings was essential for getting universal school choice, this impossible goal uh, uh, for uh, libertarians. And so um, I, I would say two things. I, I'm not a libertarian, uh, but I am a better libertarian than many libertarians who criticize me. <laughs> Um, yeah. Well, what do you, uh, are you still in that headspace, Mike, where you're... Well, first I just want to say something on the school choice, which is, I think yeah. I realize what you're talking about now. I'm, I'm in favor of all the charter school shit as well, on top of the sort of where you go to school thing. So just like, okay. I don't know, I don't want to be seen as like an anti-charter school person. Um, I, my, I feel like libertarianism is, uh, of all of the sort of fully baked fully sort of self, um, what is it? It's like internally consistent. Mm -hmm. I think it's like the only super internally consistent um, political philosophy. It's definitely my favorite. It sort of it feels like a true North. It's the thing that I hold myself up against when I'm doing or speaking about something or, or defending something that's um, I think important, but not libertarian. I don't know. I, I think about it a lot. Libertarians do not win. Libertarians have never won. Um, libertarians also require for most of their arguments to work the world to be libertarian and that's everything yeah. from the drug debate that we're having now to um, specifically foreign policy is where I think it like really breaks down uh, things like trade also um, and I just have become I think it was especially during tw like twice tw I mean throughout the late teens but like really COVID made this very clear to me that I just wanted things to work and probably fundamentally the difference is libertarianism which would have to be hands-off laissez-faire everybody agrees it works um does not put forward a a set of things that it would like to do to the world to change it and i have a very specific idea of how the world could be better and i think that nobody will ever win anything without a compelling vision for the future that is very specific. Um, and so I think that you have to kind of come with that, like the city, our city should look like this. Even earlier today, we were talking about public schools. Libertarians don't believe in the concept. So it's sort of weird, like, to, to, like how libertarian are we really? Um, like at what degree of libertarianism are you? 
Well, yeah. How can you say libertarians? Hold on. How can you say libertarians don't have wins? I mean, I can think of a ton of things in the last decade or so that have changed in the direction of libertarianism and in, in ways that libertarians have been on the ground advocating for. I mean, one of which is the, you know, vast acceptance and legalization and decriminalization in many places of marijuana. Um, we also see the beginning of um, that type of thing happening with psychedelics as well. We see some trials for ketamine as a means of helping veterans no. get past PTSD. These are all wins delivered. No, those are things that you like. Libertarians. Those are things that you like as a libertarian. Those are not things that libertarians did. That, that, libertarians those are all... have played a huge drug policy alliance and SSTP and all. Well, hold on. I want to I want to go through the list. Libertarians have played a big part in passing some of these reforms and in working on the ground to get these things passed. I mean, we've seen huge victories in school choice. Uh, we have, I believe, like Florida, Arizona, a whole bunch of states that are moving in this direction. Um, you look at the degree to which school choice played a part in Virginia, and there's a little bit of this referendum on COVID lockdown policy. Again, libertarians have been advocating for these things at school choice specific organizations for a long time. We see qualified immunity rollbacks um, and certain changes to policing practices that, again, are things libertarians have been advocating for. I mean, we see, I, even though it's stupid, and seen as really like, you know, trivial occupational licensing schemes. Libertarians are sort of like institute for justice lawyers are the ones who are focused on rolling back some of these things that are really onerous toward entrepreneurs, especially poor minority entrepreneurs. I mean, you look at sort of the success of the YIMBY movement, which I know YIMBYs are sort of a, co a coalition of some libertarians and some progressives, right? But you look at the degree to which YIMBYs have actually had some major policy successes. I'm looking at like the Austin housing market and the degree to which home prices have actually really cooled. And it seems like they're actually beginning to take more of the Sunbelt trajectory than the California one, right? Like Austin has decided to follow Sunbelt steps, not become LA and San Francisco-ified, right? How can you look at these things and say that libertarians, that these ideas don't work or that libertarians don't have concrete policy wins? Because those are all specific things that libertarians agree with, not libertarianism. Libertarianism is, is the, it is, it would require a real absence of authority in most aspects of our lives. And if all of that happened at once, you'd have perhaps, you know, theoretically, a world that I would be very excited about. But in a world where you get like libertarianism on illegal immigration, but not libertarianism on social welfare, that's a much worse version of social welfare. And that is my problem with like these things, even if I don't- I agree I, well, with that. I agree with the critique that you're making there, right? I live in New York where- we're seeing our city coffers depleted by the day because we've decided, oh, we'll just do free shelter for all and let in anybody who wants it, including a bunch of illegal immigrants. And it's like, well, that's my money that I paid as a taxpayer that's being spent on these people. You can't have one without the other. That simply does not work. But the claim that you're making is more specific than that, though, I think, which is that libertarians never win. We do win. Maybe it's not the areas that you no, want I, I, us to win in, but like no, school no. choice is a big win. I, like rolling back I the don't... war on drugs, occupational licensing, qualified immunity. All these things are big wins to me. I think that, so I agree that libertarians are like those things. I just don't think that that's a win for this, libertarianism. I think that's a thing that like either liberals or conservatives like, and when it's this hodgepodge system, that's just not libertarianism. Right. You're not, you're not forwarding libertarianism in, in America. You're forwarding, honestly, the things that we're talking about other than school choice. Uh, so like the drug thing, all the immigration stuff, the, this whole fucking immigration. Well, immigration, I don't feel like anything, hold on. I don't think any progress has been made on the immigration front. Simply having utter chaos at the border and a totally batshit system of asylum seeking where people can't get work authorization and can't actually like, you know, make a living for themselves. Like this is not a libertarian win. I don't see anything that's happening at the border simply because more illegal immigrants are in the country during the Biden years than before does not mean that we moved the needle in a libertarian direction on immigration. To me, what would be a libertarian direction on immigration would be if we, um, you know, 4X the number of uh, H-1B visas that we allowed, but we haven't done stuff well, like that, right? Those are the actual serious policy making no, 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 things no. that we choose to abdicate on. on. That wouldn't be libertarianism. That would be a smart policy for immigration. That would not be amnesty <laughs> for 10 million immigrants, which I'm sure a lot of your libertarian friends would want. All illegal immigrants here get amnesty immediately. I think open, straight up open borders is a libertarian. I was an open borders libertarian when I was a wee lad. First learning about all this stuff, I was super, super committed to it but because it, but, it only makes sense if you have every other aspect of liber libertarianism in place and you never will. So you, I think you have to fight for something that is, sorry, go ahead. Well, I, I just, I think it's a little bit dishonest to say that the situation that we have right now is what libertarians want at the point. No, I don't think that. Right? Like, I don't, I, yeah. Okay. I don't think that. Okay. 
Mike, because I mean, right I now ask- we essentially have a really frustrating situation where so many people are coming in. It's done in a terribly disorganized manner. We don't have any sort of political will that really consents this and agrees that this is the right approach. And then we also have a ton of these asylum seekers and recent newcomers who are waiting on authorization from the federal government to work. So they're just essentially being forced to be these like wards of the state in a way that I don't think most people want. Maybe progressives want that, but like I think most conservatives and libertarians don't want that. And I think the actual migrants themselves probably don't want this either. Here's what I want. I want to provide them a bus ticket home. And that is what I want. And it's not a libertarian position. <laughs> it's and, not very libertarian. And uh, I and that is and the reason I want that is because I don't think we're ever going to live in a libertarian world where this new group of immigrants is not going to be plugged into our social welfare system for the rest of their lives. Like this entrance is crazy. Like my grandma was an immigrant. That's it was a very different kind of immigration in the 20th or early 20th century. I hear that. I hear that line of argument all the time. And like, I think it's fair to say we don't want people to become, you know, charges of the state for years and years on end. But I don't know if we necessarily have the evidence. And maybe this is like the annoying nitpickiness of libertarians coming through. But I don't know if we have the evidence to say that, you know, these ones were made different than immigrants of 30 years ago. I know that their whole entrance has been drains on the state, straight up like living in government funded housing being given government funded supplies like wh- that's the, that's the, how that is our relationship with this new group of people and i and- think and i i agree i and i think in many cases though the original sin here is what the federal government has done and the clumsiness of the biden administration because of course if you're um somebody who just crossed the border and you hear via tiktok or whatever that new york city is a place where you can stay for free in shelters for 30 days 60 days 90 days at a time of course you know, you're a rational actor and it's in your self-interest to go do that. And then the federal government tells you that you can't actually get work authorization and you don't actually know how to get an ID, how to secure housing for yourself, and also, most crucially, how to actually make a living. So I feel as though we're setting them up for horrible failure because the federal government is sort of the thing that really, really needs to get out of the way fundamentally on this very, you know, This is the original sin at the root of it. The original sin is not necessarily um, the work ethics of these people who are coming in across the border. This is the libertarianism thing, though, where it's like, wouldn't it be nice if, wouldn't it be nice if we had this plus the government wouldn't be involved, but the government is involved. The government. I'm not saying the government doesn't need to be involved at all. In a city like like New York, where you have these super super left wing uh, places where everyone's going to go, and it's it's always going to be a problem. And it's like the the thing that would work here on immigration is to just police the border. That's the thing that would work. That's the easiest. That's the lowest hanging fruit is to get is to just not allow the amnesty in the or the uh, I'm sorry. What do they declare when they come here? It's the fake. They say they're asylum, asylum, amnesty. Right, um, asylum. Yeah. Yeah. change the asylum yeah. rules and yeah. and shut down the fucking border or at least tightly control the border. Uh, and I'll then do. we can have a sensible immigration policy, which most Americans do already are on board with <gasps> what you were saying before. More H1B1 yeah. visas and things like this. Like, I mean, don't, don't misunderstand board. me. That's my preferred approach, right? Yeah. Like, I'm just trying to identify, like, what's the real thing creating these people essentially being charges of the state? It's the fact that they can't work to support themselves. But I agree yeah. with you fundamentally that a situation in which we just have um, this sort of anarchic chaos of people coming across the border and a sort of feckless, impotent federal government that says, oh, I don't know what to do. We'll throw our hands up in the air. Like, I don't think that that's a good, I think that squanders public trust in the long term. And I see really, really big long term implications of that. So I want to be very clear that like my sense of what we ought to do with the border is not tethered to this libertarian fanciful thinking that, oh, everything will just turn out okay. Like, no, the way that it's currently being handled is totally unacceptable. Yeah. I mean, I, I also think, the, think sensible, the sensible libertarian policy would essentially be make visas across the board much more, much easier to obtain. And neither party seems very interested in that. And I, my, my feeling listening to you talk about immigration and listening to Rufo in that clip is that you're setting the bar too high for a libertarian win that is not applied to anybody else, um, that it has to be some wholesale adoption across the board of, of libertarianism. And like the school, like for <laughs> but 60 like years, the school choice example that he brought up, for instance, uh, which he is uh, taking credit for, I think might be a yeah. little bit overstated there. What did because, Chris Rufo do to bring about mass uh, well, school choice? Well, like, what he's what? saying is that like the culture war aspect of it like brought it over the finish line, which in some cases that, some that could be true. But it was also the pandemic um, 
getting people pissed off about the schools got people, uh, you know, the schools uh, kind of waking up to what the teachers unions were doing was a big inflection yeah. point. Corey yeah. DeAngelis, who used to work for Reason yeah. and now works for another school choice organization is a hardcore libertarian. I would awesome. give him a lot of credit for getting a lot of these bills uh, across the line. And so I, I think libertarians can, can, can take a lot of credit for that win. And it's an important win because when you're talking about our vision for the future, that is a big part of our vision is where people um, can kind of go to the align themselves with the institutions that um, support their values. And that that is what we are about, as opposed to what Chris Rufo is about, which is about making uh, passing the stop the stop woke act in Florida and sort of dictating top down what can and can't be taught in every single school in Florida or wherever else. Well, in a public school, and right? He's not he's not saying you can't have a woke yeah. private school. So that should be the case. If you're going to have public, this is also the problem. Is do you Zach? Do you really believe in the concept of public education, or is or or do you not? Like, do you really think we should have a robust, sort of well funded public school system? I think well, you know, get, get, allowing I people. I, I think giving people. Um, that need help money to educate their kids is fine. I don't okay. think the state needs to be dictating curricula though. So like if you were to totally privatize the school system, um, but give out vouchers to poor people who can't afford to go to school, then yeah, I would be totally satisfied with that kind of approach. Um, yeah, so that answer is no. no. That's a very yeah. long, eloquent way of saying no, and that's fine. But that is like, if you're going to have, a, we're talking, this is the thing, like libertarians are now talking about a different world that doesn't exist. If you're talking about a world in America that exists right now, which is like we have public schools, no, you're never going to get rid of public schools for at least, let's say, the next 20 years. Maybe something crazy happens and people are like, no, we're getting rid of public schools. I mean, that's very shocking to me, the idea of that, that 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 would happen. But let's yeah, let's yeah. say for right now, public schools exist. The question is what to do with them. And should this crazy, woke, regressive race bullshit be taught in schools? And I think it's very reasonable to say no, because once you in open that door, to pu public funded education, you have to, you should have a say in what that is. Why? I mean, it's, and that I think is, that's the, that, that's where the argument is. That's where the debate is right now. It's not over here with like, what about getting, uh, putting a whole new system in place entirely, which I'm open to. I mean, I don't even think kids, I feel like most kids up until sixth grade, like summer camp every day sounds great to me. I don't think people really learn much of value before then and don't have to, like really. They just summer camp every day, Y Combinator later on. There yes. is no yeah. There's no need for public schools. Um, yes. but again, I mean, you're envisioning I, a new future, Mike. That's very wait, problematic. That's what I'm saying, you, I'm saying like, we can do that. I have all sorts of crazy ideas about how the world should actually run that would be better. Yeah. We can work towards those things. But in the meantime, like we're not abolishing public schools. So there's a question of what to do with them. And that is... And you think Chris Rufo's approach for dictating curriculum and what can or cannot be taught in Florida schools is I, the best I way mean, for I think it? We need to me, that's we have, plausible. We have, we have to yeah. separate uh, what you know, K-12 schools from higher education, which he also wants to apply to from corporations, which he also wants to apply these standards. And and so my well, point is really, money, again, the, 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 when, when you're giving public money to these to these schools, not even just public schools, but private schools, then you're opening the door to me having an opinion about what's taught there. Like, I don't want my money going to Harvard to be sort of raising the next generation of fucking Hamas activists like that. I don't want that. So like, I don't let's want my money have a conversation about it, but there all. it's actually yeah. easier. The, yeah, there it's easier there. I think the idea of getting behind, like no more funding to private schools. I think we could get that one over the, over the, over the, over the finish line, but getting rid of public uh, colleges, that's going to be much more difficult. I don't see a world where that happens. Um, and so there's a, there you do actually, I think it's perfectly fair for a U.S. taxpayer to have a say in how their money is being spent. If it has to be spent on public education, then unfortunately, people are going to have an opinion on that. Um, yeah, but so these things yeah. these things are intention, though, because um, if you're for school choice in the way that I am, ultimately, you know, I want like universal school choice here in Florida. You can take your money and you can go send your kid to a Catholic school with state money. And I think that is a great thing. Um, no. Chris Rufo, I don't think does think that's a good thing, and it sounds like you don't think that's a good thing either. So that that is a real. Well, I don't think that I should be paying, for the future. I, no, I do not think that I should be be forced, <laughs> be forced to pay, or to give yeah, literally to give you money to take your kid to 
learn some crazy faith-based ideology. I don't think that yeah. I should have to do that. I don't that. think my money should be forcibly given to, taken to give to anybody for anything, but this is like the world we live in. So I'd rather the the money actually be controlled by the parents than the bureaucratic structure of some state. So th that's kind of the difference that that we have, I think. But I yep. do think there's there's a bigger thing here, though, which is just like, how can Rufo say that we aren't interested in winning or that libertarians haven't won, that our beliefs um, haven't won the day in a bunch of different areas when maybe you think that these are more uh, marginal wins, but they really are wins. I mean, what do you, what do you expect? Libertarians are not like, it's not like we're like, you know, <laughs> you know, 100 million strong in the United States, right? Like we're a small group of people, but there are legitimate areas. Like, I mean, even just well, attempting to- Why are to... you a small group of people? Libertarians, it's been around for a long time. Because we're all autistic. Are you kidding me? We're terrible. At, like, we're not it's fun not to that. be around. It's not a compelling, the ideology is not compelling. And there has to be a reason for that. And I think it's because libertarianism is, is essentially, an, it's like a, it's an absence of vision, which makes sense theoretically, maybe rationally, is not compelling on a human level. People want to know what it is specifically that you're trying to build. And they believe in the concept. I think the average person does believe in the concept of a government that does things for them, like that creates the thing that lays the groundwork, that has the roads, has the public transit. There's a school like every president is voted in because people have this they idea articulate a king. clear vision for day one, I'll do X, Y, and Z. And the first few days I'll do, yeah, I mean, I think there's different schools of thought within libertarianism as to the role that the federal government ought to play. But like, at least in terms of how I look at it to my ideal form of government, it's not the government needs to be abolished entirely. It's not even like, oh, government should refrain from building roads. Like there are a whole bunch of functions that I view as essential that I'm totally comfortable with. It's more of a matter of like, are there different piecemeal ways that we can really get the state out of the way to allow people to just have a little bit more individual choice to be able to start their own business uh, free of having to get a stupid license for flower arranging right. um, to make sure that agents of the state like police state like police officers are actually held accountable when they abuse people and deprive them of their civil liberties because they just don't think that they're above the law. Um, it, you know, it's some of these little things like this, which I think libertarians really have had concrete, substantive policy wins where it's like, OK, I don't believe that I'm going to be able to wave a magic wand and have everybody be, you know, reading Hayek all the time the way that I would like. But I'm trying to be realistic about, like, what are smaller steps we could take toward a better, slightly freer world? And I really see libertarians delivering in this, at least to a greater degree than Chris Rufo is. Well, you just said the problem. It's like it, it, I think the freedom thing specifically works when you have it. It does not work if you have it in some places and not others. For example, the immigration that I was talking about before, like freedom of movement, but also there's a welfare state is the worst possible world. So, or it's the worst possible version of immigration and welfare is to have unlimited I immigration and the welfare. So that's the, that's my one, that's my major problem with it. With it really is, is it that it's like, it doesn't seem to work when you do it piecemeal. You can have these little wins, but if you have a little win in something like, I don't know, drugs, for example, drug le like uh, let's decriminalize or let's just legalize opioids. But you also believe that the state is responsible for housing opioid addicts for the rest of their life. Then you get San Francisco. You really do. That's what the housing there is. It's like people are doing drugs and entitled to housing. And, um, and life. But these are the what most if, extreme examples of like libertarianism. That's where I live. Like run, I, run them I, up, I, right? I'm like, San Francisco right now. That's the world. No, that no in. yeah, abs absolutely. But it's like oh. the, no libertarian. I think at least oh. the libertarianism that I uh, support and espouse is not one that's like, like I am worried about some of the awful externalities created by what happens if we have, you know, mass access to heroin and fentanyl, right? Like I'm, I'm, I consider myself a pretty reasonable libertarian where it's like, I don't necessarily want uh, borders thrown open and fentanyl vending machines in every freaking school, right? And so I, no, I feel, I feel sell legitimately out. great. Sell out. That's Zach. I, I'm like, sure I'm going to get like fired for this. But it. I, I legitimately right think that sometimes it's like machines. libertarians are almost caricatured into this like more extreme and cartoonish version of what we actually are, where it's like, I don't know. I remember when I was like 18 and I was given a, I was in a, a sticky legal situation, we'll just put it that way, for smoking marijuana uh, in Virginia. And it's like 10 years later, it's pretty freaking awesome that I don't ever have to find myself. I live in New York now, uh, but even in Virginia, I think it's, you know, getting more lax over time. Like, it's pretty glorious that I don't have to fear literal imprisonment for a thing that I do uh, in the same way that I consume white wine. Like, to me, these things, which may seem really, really small, 
are just, there are these little small steps that we're taking to move in the direction of freedom. And I understand that that's not the sexiest vision in the world, but like we're a small group of people and we have actually delivered uh, some of these major yeah, wins. Th there's also some pretty, I would say some pretty big wins that the libertarian movement has exerted. And I mean, would you consider if there was this society let's say, of federalists who were uh, largely made up of libertarians and in putting people <laughs> on influential <laughs> positions within the judicial branch that then struck things down like unconstitutional vaccine mandates, uh, <laughs> you know, gun laws, that that would be considered a major so win? Or is that just yes. something along well, the edges? <laughs> let's talk about that. Yeah. Because I think that brilliant, one of the most brilliant political, like long-term political strategies, probably in American history. The problem with it is it was full, the idea, the like culture in America has not changed. It, there was never an attempt to really persuade yeah. lots of people. And so what that means is we now have a, a situation where- We have the legitimacy of the Supreme Court continuously called into question, regardless of what they're it's gonna get, doing. I think that what's yeah. going to happen is eventually the court's going to get packed. Hey, Thanks for watching that clip from our show, Just Asking Questions. You can watch another clip here or the full episode here. And please subscribe to Reason's YouTube channel and the Just Asking Questions podcast feed for notifications when we post new episodes every Thursday.